Hey there, once again, good morning. Happy day 26 of our consecration. We're going to jump into the litany of St. Joseph. So let us begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, have mercy on us. Christ, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy on us. Father, all powerful, have mercy on us. Let's see if we can get a little bit better. There we go. Father, all powerful. Have mercy on us, Jesus, eternal Son of the Father, Redeemer of the world, save us. Spirit of the Father and the Son, boundless life of both, sanctify us. Holy Trinity, hear us. Holy Mary, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Renowned offspring of David, pray for us. Light of patriarchs, pray for us. Spouse of the Virgin, Mother of God, pray for us. Chaste guardian of the Virgin, pray for us. Foster Father of the Son of God, pray for us. Diligent Protector of Christ, pray for us. Head of the Holy Family, pray for us. Joseph Most Chaste, pray for us. Joseph Most Prudent, pray for us. Joseph Most Strong, pray for us. Joseph Most Obedient, pray for us. Joseph Most Faithful, pray for us. Mirror of Patience, pray for us. Lover of Poverty, pray for us. Model of Artisans, pray for us. Glory of home life, pray for us. Guardian of virgins, pray for us. Pillar of families, pray for us. Solace of the wretched, pray for us. Hope of the sick, pray for us. Patron of the dying, pray for us. Terror of demons, pray for us. Protector of holy church, pray for us. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, spare us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, graciously hear us, O Lord. Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. He made him the Lord of his house and ruler of all his substance. Let us pray. O God, who in your unspeakable providence chose blessed Joseph to be the spouse of your own most holy mother, grant we beseech you that we may deserve to have him for our intercessor in heaven, whom we reverence as our defender on earth, who lives and reigns world without end. Amen. So as we start out on this day 26, I just want to say, Hello to my 11 people that are on here. A big hello to Laura, Rose, and Lorraine. And I'm so glad that you made it live today, Lorraine. That is outstanding. So as we open up this 26th day, we are still within the week of the knowledge of St. Joseph. And today's on charity. Today we continue to reap the harvest that comes from Joseph's lessons on interior silence and recollection. Silence first be brings us into the encounter with God. It opens us then to the Holy Spirit and the word he speaks in our hearts. And finally, it forms foundation from which we learn true charity. Sorry about that. Quote, in Joseph, the apparent tension between the active and the contemplative life finds an ideal harmony that is only possible for those who possess the perfect charity. Following St. Augustine's well-known distinction between the love of the truth, caritas veritas, and the practical demands of love, necessitas caritas, we can say that St. Joseph experienced both love of the truth, that pure and contemplative love of the divine truth, which radiated from the humanity of Christ, and the demands of love, that equally pure and selfless love required for his vocation to safeguard and develop the humanity of Jesus which was inseparably linked to his divinity. Again, Redemptoris Custos, reference 27. The contemplative life is typically considered to be the life of dwelling constantly in the presence of truth and love, while the active life is typically considered one of outward love, manifesting the love of God in the world towards others. Sometimes the active life can also be conflated with busyness. We are used to the, we're used to the Martha Mary distinction, which comes from Jesus reproving Martha for being busy while Mary simply sits in the presence of Jesus undisturbed. St. John Paul II points out to us the ideal harmony we are created for, found in Joseph, one of bringing together interior recollection focused in the divine indwelling and the exterior actions of love that flow seamlessly from the integrated life we were made for. Our actions from the movements of our minds and hearts we choose to sit with, entertain, or nurture to the outward expression of words and behaviors towards ourselves and others are all meant to flow from this contemplative recollection in the presence of God. 
We receive God's movement. This is how our communion with God expands outwards to our communion with each other. This communion is most often manifest outwardly in communication. Communication is the art of receiving from others and then making ourselves vulnerable in the gift of self in return. The less silent we are, the less recollected, the less practiced we are at receiving. This lack of experience in receiving makes it extremely difficult to truly listen to others. We suffer tremendously in our culture of noise and distraction which ultimately makes us all neophytes at communication. Cardinal Sarah, once again, clarifies this for us. In order to listen, it is necessary to keep quiet. I do not mean merely a sort of constraint to be physically silent and not to interrupt what someone else is saying, but rather an interior silence. In other words, a silence that not only is directed toward receiving the other person's words, but also reflects a heart overflowing with a humble love, capable of full attention, friendly and welcome, and voluntarily self-denying, and strong with the awareness of our poverty. The silence of listening is a form of attention, a gift of self to the other, and a mark of moral generosity. It should manifest an awareness of our humility so as to agree to receive from another person a gift that God is giving us. For the other person is always a treasure and a precious gift that God offers to help us grow in humility, humanity, and nobility. That quote is from The Power of Silence, Cardinal Sarah, reference 81. The gift of a receptive and listening heart and mind is one of the greatest gifts we can ever give someone. This gets more difficult if the content of conversation challenges our own points of view. We need Joseph's help here. He models for us the perfect stance to take in these situations. We can trust God above all things like he did, surrendering ourselves to him and believing that no matter what, all will be well. Then we can let our hearts and our minds be quiet resting in his presence. This recollection teaches us how to be open and silent, then in the presence of others, even if they are wrong, because we know there is a bigger picture. We can be receptive first and foremost of the gift that this person is in his or her own being. We can be receptive then of the dignity of his or her own experience and the thoughts and feelings it leads to. Again, even if it is misdirected or needs to be refined. With this open receptivity and listening heart, we will offer an experience of encounter to the other. We will encounter the other. Encounter itself heals many wounds. This takes practice and time to develop. We are capable of this recollection through and the possibility for receptive listening that flows from it. We are students in the school of love. St. Joseph is our teacher. If we study and do our homework, we can learn the lesson. What a phenomenal week we're having, guys, with St. Joseph. Really exposing his interior silence. Realizing what can come from silence. And how do you feel about that Cardinal Sarah, huh? As accurate and precise with his words, he speaks the truth. What a refreshing thing. I definitely have to pick up that book and read Cardinal Sarah more often. But, you know, as we consider St. Joseph, you know, to learn this lesson of love is to really make from our experience of listening to God in silence, as God is truly present to us, that that should flow over into active listening with others too. I remember being in the seminary and taking a course on counseling, and it was a section on active listening, where you would just listen to the one who is expressing themselves, and then you would repeat a one word or a phrase just to indicate that you are listening, you are attentive, and you want to hear more. And it's funny, when you put on this active listening and you exercise this discipline, what's being encouraged here in this week, certainly, and today on charity, you know, when you actually put that into practice, 
people will like pause for a moment and, and they're like, you want to listen to more? You're invested in me that much? Because mostly, you know, we tune each other out. We just want to be heard. It's the social media world for sure. It's like, I want to make my statements and I want to get reactions, you know, instead of responding with silence and attentiveness, receptivity. I know for me, that's what I long for. I long for that type of interaction with others. And I love being a person that can receive, even though I'm imperfect at it. I want to continue to learn the lesson of love in the school of love, certainly from the intercession and example of St. Joseph. Now, before we go any further, let's see if I could pull up my, my uh, chat here. And... La -da -da -dee. Well, it looks like I'm having more troubles with the chat. Oh, well. So, reflection questions for today. What specific issues are most difficult for you to communicate effectively about with others? So I think I think what definitely gets in the way is um, interpersonal relationships where dynamics are sour, or um, you know feelings are hurt. When emotions get in the way of it, right? Like that that definitely uh, makes things challenging. Um, when somebody is living diametrically opposed or sharing opinions diametrically opposed or aggressive or violent, even. At times, it's unnerving. It's like, you know, I cannot listen to this. You know, I will not listen to this. And we become confrontational. You know, I think what St. Joseph is showing us is even in silence, you know, even in silence, there are greater treatments, you know, and I think this is a, a worthy lesson. Looking through today's lens, what issues of trust might be underlying your difficulty in listening in these conversations? Again, I just think... Uh, you know, emotions definitely, but also like exhaustion or tiredness. Like if you're, if you're tired or if you're hungry, um, you know, I definitely get hangry at times or if I don't have my caffeine. So, you know, like those, those types of uh, realities, diet is a big deal. You know, um, there's a lot of it relies on diet, you know, and proper, proper exercise. And all of these things can definitely contribute to mood swings um, for all of us. So, you know, I think, I think looking at this holistically and then also prayerfully, if I'm not praying, you know, I definitely react more without a doubt. So, um, you know, that, that's something to really consider. What ruminations do you find yourself? Let's see if I can open this up. Distracted by in these areas. And how can Joseph's model of trust help you? to connect to a better way of handling these situations. I think we're already seeing Joseph's modeling of silence throughout this week. And I mean, what a prominent example we have. And I definitely want to be more intentional in my prayers with him. And I, and you know, those, those same distractions, I think, you know, it's, it's without a doubt for me, um, you know, that I get tripped up, um, you know, but when you look to like people who are really holy, you know, people who are, uh, they just kind of float around, <laughs> you know, interacting with people, interacting in conflict situations, and they have serenity. You know, you think of, you think of the saints, you know, I think of Mother Elvira, the foundress of Community Chinacolo. She definitely moved around that way with great love and was willing to confront too with a good smack upside the head. <laughs> what a blessing she is to community. What a blessing she was to me. Um, so as we conclude this week before the litany of humility, I just want to express my prayers for you and thank you for praying for me. And as we continue on this journey closer to May 1st, we come to the realization of a thorough consecration of ourselves. Yes, but our intention is to consecrate our parish community. One, the physical community that we have here at St. John Paul II here in Nakati, but really our digital community too. We've been connected, and this has touched my heart, and I hope that we can continue efforts just like this in the near future with other types of devotions. Let's pray the litany of humility. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. O oh, Jesus, meek and humble of heart, hear me. From the desire of being esteemed, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being loved, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being extolled, deliver me, Jesus. 
From the desire of being honored, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being praised, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being preferred, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being consulted, deliver me, Jesus. From the desire of being approved, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being humiliated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being despised, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of suffering rebukes, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being calumniated, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being forgotten, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being ridiculed, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being wronged, deliver me, Jesus. From the fear of being suspected, deliver me, Jesus. That others may be loved more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be esteemed more than I, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That in the opinion of the world, others may increase and I may decrease, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be chosen and I set aside, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be praised and I unnoticed, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others may be preferred to me in everything, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. That others become holier than I, provided that I become as holy as I should, Jesus, grant me the grace to desire it. Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you tomorrow. Have a beautiful day, everyone.